Good morning. It is time. I guess it's still morning. No, it's not. It's afternoon. It's time to get in the Word and eat out of 1 Samuel chapter 16. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for your insight. We thank you for your organization. And we thank you for your professionalism. And we thank you for just being who you are and you are top of the line teacher. Thank you for teaching me how to read your word and help me to share those things that you shared with me or told me or gave me with simplicity so that people can walk out with the knowledge of the word of God, whether they want to live by your word or whether or not at least they will have the whole spectrum of what you plan for man. Thank you for forgiving us and dying and sending your son to, 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 to show us the power for meaning of how much you love man. And thank you for your word that we have the right to forgive each other because... Down here, Lord, I know you everywhere, but we need forgiveness, and thank you for giving us the tool to use so when we need it, we have it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I want to say this before I get started. This is something that I'm probably going to take this video and, and give some instructions, so I'm going to take my time to say this right here. I've been praying that the Lord will give us, or give me, I said, Lord, I said, I know so many people. Good morning, Elaine. I said, I know so many people, and I said, I know these people don't want to spend eternity in hell. I know they don't. I don't want to do it, and I know that the people that I know, they don't want to go to hell. Some people just misinformed, or uh, they just don't know, or some, some people don't care. But for those that care and really want to know, have an opportunity to know how to get it right now. Because God has shut down everything. And I wouldn't be surprised if one reason why God shut it down is because he had to shake the he had to shake the covers, and with that being said, it's too many things that God said people are not getting, and I don't have enough people. The the harvest is ripe, but I don't have enough people educated enough to know how to take my word. So He's been giving me little by little how to break it down easy enough so people can get it, so they can understand how to use God's tool, which is is the Word of God. So it's a way you can read it that it will make it simple so you can understand how he wants this uh, word read. And I'm going to use terms that a child can use so that he can understand because my, he told me that he said, I want you to be able to reach the children as well as the grown up grown ups because he getting ready to do the same thing because grown people are just kind of set in my ways and you're not changing. And he said, I don't talk that long because it takes too long to get a grown man to change. So be prepared to, to, to be like Peter feed the uh, lambs and the sheep. So we're going to have to make sure that this word is broken down so everybody can eat of it. Okay. All right, how is, what is God's word? And how do you read it? And is it a, in, instead, because we've been, we've, we've been, um, this book has been, um, we dealt with it. We, 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 we handled, we handled the word of God because we didn't know how. But once God gives us instructions and in how to do it, then that's going to make it easier then it would be up to us whether we either read it or uh, we could either read it or we can read it and make a choice whether or not we're going to obey it. So he's not going to just give us something and then we don't know correctly how to read it. But what God had to do was he had to raise up people to know how to read it. And I believe that he shut the world down so at least the word can get out. There is a way and a proper way to read the word of God. In the fivefold ministry, God has a person called a teacher. And I know that I'm a teacher and I do know that uh, the books in life should not um, trump the word of God. So if God is the, the teacher of teachers and he knows the type of teacher I was and he knows the results that were, were produced under anybody under me, then he qualified me to be able to explain how to read the word of God because I had to learn how to do it. And I'll share with you, and uh, you can use the way I do it, and you can get a better understanding, or you can, you know, it's your choice. But at least I want to provide what I know what works. All right, you have 66 books in the Word of God. They are put in, put in that way because God is telling a story. Okay. And I hear a lawnmower going off, and I'm like, I can't hardly concentrate. But anyway, who's who, who's cutting some this time of morning? Anyway, I can't. I almost want to get up. Hold on, y'all, because I can't stand this noise. Hold on one second. All 
I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. But this is how to do it. Honestly, first of all, you have to believe God is real. You, it's no need to listen if you don't think God is real. You have to know that this is where you find the truth. Okay. Settle that. Check one. The word of God is, uh, is a word from God. God is real and God tells the truth. Okay. We got that done. Okay. Once we know that the word of God is truth, how do you know that it's the word of God? Well, you're going to examine the word as you go. And if you don't believe it's the word of God, I mean, it is the word of God. And I, I, don't, I don't have a right answer for that other than the fact that I know that it, it's a book that absolutely changed lives if you apply the ingredients to get the results that you want. Okay. You have the Old Testament and then you have the New Testament. So let's divide the two. My son asked me a question last night and, and it became almost a debate. But it was for him. But for me, it just it was like I'm settled and I'm I'm getting annoyed with the fact that I'm I'm telling you. But God broke it down this morning so that I can because God has if you're gonna be a teacher, you're gonna have those kind of students that can challenge you. Because he was basically saying that when Paul wrote the letters to the church, he kind of did away with the Old Testament. And I said that's what we were taught. But let's go back and re-examine the words. So let's how let's see how do we do it. The Old Testament, you got the Old Testament and the New. All right. The Old Testament, in a nutshell, is God's announcement that I'm having a son. He's announcing to the world, I've given you my son. His whole purpose was, I want to save man. So when you read the Old Testament, it's like playing football. God knows I need my son to make a touchdown. So in the Old Testament, you are introduced by the devil from the beginning of the word when he saw it manifested. Now, understand that the enemy, Satan, knows the mind of God. He don't know how God going to carry things out, but he's been around him long enough to know. Just being around you is enough for me to just, you know, if I can, you know, if, I, if I'm out, then I'm trying to go down here and get, I'm going to play, the, I'm, I'm going to be your opponent. You want to bet? God has no opponent. You can't, the enemy can't do nothing but whatever we allow him to do. He has no power. But he, he, he thinks that he does. And, we, and what he does is he's trying to get us to think that he does. So when God calls the plays, now I understand God has a seed that he's trying to get to earth. So from the beginning, Adam and Eve, it was straight. They didn't have to have a sin covering or anything because it was straight God and man. That's the way God wanted it. But when sin entered the world, when the enemy came into the garden and he talked to Eve and the thing got disrupted, God said, okay, I can't deal with this right here. So he got that whole group of people that he had to just call the water to come down and the water to come up and just and, and take these people out of the way because they were renowned people, the word calls them. That means they were famous. They were nice looking. They were, you know, they were just God kind of class. Why? Why do I say that? Because they had direct contact with God because there was God and man and there was, and they just took it the wrong way. The closer you are to God, you have to be very careful that you don't get arrogant. And these people had an arrogant attitude. God said, dismiss that, you know, all y'all, whatever, I'm starting over because you, you, you missed my whole point of what I want to do. So uh, Noah was uh, brought out of that uh out of that group that, that, that lost their lives and his sons and daughter-in-laws. All right, so now we got the new world. God said, I'm getting ready to start this football game over. Now, when he starts it over, he is determined that I'm going to have, a, my son is going, I already got my son. We are, he already knows his, his, his position. He's going to be running the ball. The Old Testament it's going to produce people on the, uh, on the, uh, I don't know, I don't know about football, but on the team that's trying to stop the game and Jesus holding the ball. So with that being said, when you read the Old Testament, just remember the simple thing that God is trying to get a touchdown. Jesus is getting ready to make a touchdown and he's going to get here. So we're going to go through the first five books. So here are the plays from when uh, he spoke to Abraham in Genesis. 
The boys that he's going to use were born in Genesis. They get incarcerated for 400 years. Well, they've been in bondage for 400 years. God raised up a deliverer. A little boy came to a man. He's Moses. He comes in to get the people out of, get the, get the game back going. I got to get this game back on the field. So Moses goes in there and pull God's team out. This team of 12. His whole plan is to get a team so he can use them to be the light of the world so we can uh, get this thing back to him. So we can get back to the, his original plan. So when you read uh, Exodus, uh, Genesis is the, is, the, is the birthing ground. Now we got Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. This is when God is giving Moses the plays. He said, this is how the game is going to be played called life. These are the do's, these are the don'ts. Life if you do, death if you don't. Simple as that. Ain't nothing in between. Nobody roaming, nobody. Everybody has to be either on the right side or the wrong side. So Moses write down all the plays. He writes it down. God said, close the playbook. That's it. There will be no other plays made. No, God is not going to call a play in the middle of the game and say, oh, I forgot that. The book is closed when Moses, when Moses closed the book and he writes the 32nd uh, um, chapter of Deuteronomy. He said, write it in a song. Write that in a song. And the book really just goes over plays after plays after plays. It's really not a lot. It's not a lot that God said. He had that first group of children that he wanted, but they wouldn't listen. So he said, okay, y'all going on the ground. I ain't got time to deal with y'all because I got a plan. I don't see man like what y'all see. I don't see death the way you see it. Get out of the way and let me grow up some kids that I know going to carry out my plan. So he called that second group. So it took 40 years to, to get, it took 40 years for somebody to have a baby, the baby to grow up, get the, get the old people out of the way. So everybody that's walking with Moses and Aaron is less than 40 years old. Um, we're 40 years younger than they are. Well, no, I can't say it like that. The oldest person that came out of the whole group was 19 and under, so 59 years old was the people that actually came uh, to the to uh, the promised land, except Moses and uh, Aaron. Well, Mo Moses didn't make it. But anyway, God, God used the 40 years to get rid of the people that wouldn't follow his game plan. God never said another play after Moses wrote every, all the plays down. Now we get to the promised land. Joshua receives the ball. They got Joshua in it. You know, now Moses is passing it on. We don't have Jesus until we get him born. But okay, the ball has been passed from Moses. Now Joshua is carrying it. So Joshua is in the promise, promised land, passing out the land and doing what he had to do, fighting the folk that need to be fought, doing his part. Then Joshua dies. He passed the baton to the judges. So we got several judges here, and they're not kings or anybody, but they're regulating the land. The ball is still in the hand. Everybody get doing their part. So now you got Joshua. I mean, now you got uh, judges. So we got the judges. Then we get over into Samuel. Samuel is a book that's going to introduce us to the first king that Israel ever had. And that's what I'm going to be teaching today from uh, 1 Samuel 16. So then you got the book of the kings. Everything surrounded the kings. Yeah, all of them got their plays. We're going to learn about those. Then after we get the kings, we got the prophets in the midst of the kings just giving a word. Not only are they taking the ball, getting the ball in their hand, they're also looking back at what Moses did. And then they're looking at future because we're getting closer to the coming of, of, of Christ being born. Isaiah is going to talk about a little bit more. He's going to start saying Jesus is forming. Now Jesus has always been. He's always been in the midst of the plays, making sure that the game is being played right. All right. So now, but Jesus said, now I got to be transformed into a human being. So they were like, get ready, get your suit on, Jesus, get your suit on. You got to go through the process, got to go through the process. So all the trees was born, all the, that he needed, all the animals that he needed was positioned. So God was strategically putting everything in order because he's blowing the trumpet to us to say, I'm getting ready to send my son. I'm getting ready to send my son. Whatever, I, I, this whole thing, this whole Old Testament uh, uh, books are just God's announcing of his um, baby shower. I'm going to have a baby shower. So my son is coming. My son is coming. My son is coming. My son is coming. From the time that, and understand that Jesus' relatives, 
he silenced abortions. Why? Because everybody always bringing up this thing. Well, what if the woman was raped? It's settled. Jesus' great grandmama, one of them, she had a baby by her father-in-law. And that was Perez coming through him, through Judah sleeping with his daughter-in-law. And then Jesus showed himself through the, the two twins in the bed. That boy snatched that baby back. And the one that had the, the ribbon on came second because Jesus said, I'm starting this thing so y'all can understand. My daddy is really giving you a shadow of things to come. So when Judah slept, didn't keep his word, but he slept with his daughter-in-law. His daughter-in-law had this baby and then she had twins. But that boy, Jesus started showing up right there. I can tell you all of this based on what I know, but this, this thing is getting smaller and smaller. But anyway, so we got different ways that you're going to see the Christ, the Christ. Every time you see somebody that, who is Judah? Judah is the one that's going to come in as the Christ. Every time they went to war, Judah was the first one to show up. Why? Because God had to have somebody to represent. I got you. You stand back. I'm going first. So Judah is the next person that is going to represent the plays that God is going to use to actually get his son here. When Isaiah gets here, he's going to announce the coming. The, 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 the trumpet of the son being born, you know, it's just like the pregnant woman. She's getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. And then when you get to the minor prophets, you get to the, after, after Daniel and going, you get Daniel and then you get, and, and God is just raising up, showing people what I can do if you obey me. I'll, I'll put you in the midst so you can contact the king. They're not just trying to get a position. These people are just born, they hear from God and then God raises them up because he's trying to save the world. So Daniel was in trouble, did all his probably committing adultery and all this stuff. But then he turned from his wicked ways. And then God saw that he had that spirit. God, Daniel saw what I had compared to where I am up under these folk right here. I'm going back to God and I pray three times a day. And so the king heard need somebody, somebody to interpret the dream. Daniel was the one. He said, king, don't be so hasty. Let me tell you what the dream is. I'm going to tell you what the dream is. That's what you want. And I'm going to tell you what it means. So this guy knew that Daniel was the man. But anyway, we go on in there and, uh, Daniel got his position. But after that, the announcement, the announcement, the little things that are going to happen, the stuff that the, 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 the prophecy that's coming forth to us, we're living in a time where the prophecy is still unfolding itself from the minor prophets. So finally, after the book of Malachi, the last thing that God said, four verses before you end Malachi, he said, remember Moses. Do not forget the, the, what I said to Moses on Mount Sinai. So a lot of people thinking that, okay, now we're finna usher in Jesus. Malachi is the last play of the Old Testament. He's getting ready to, everybody set. All the trees there, all the donkeys there, all the people that's supposed to be born. All the opposers that are going to come against Jesus. You've been born. All this foolishness that we've been doing. God said, I'm getting ready to put a stop to it. I'm getting ready to give you the last way that I'm going to get to man. I'm going to give you an example. And a teacher knows that once she's taught the lesson, that when she started doing that after school remediation and doing, breaking it down, doing that extra stuff, then you know that the final exam is getting ready to come open because I've done everything I could to get you prepared to understand I love man. So when he, so when the baby, when the um, New Testament ushers in, it gives us all of Jesus' relatives. Jesus had a... Um, so you can stop all this crazy stuff about a boy. Stop killing me, baby. Jesus had um, a prostitute as a, a grandmama. He had a, um, a woman that slept with her, um, uh, her, her father-in-law as a grandmama. I'm just saying that these mamas in, the, in line. It's four women in there that you have to pay attention to that we wouldn't recognize to be connected to the Christ. But you know what God said? All y'all just like them. All us just like them. We just, that, he just said, I brought this in out because I know that y'all look at you think you good at two-shoes. You ain't no better than the one that my, that's related to my son. So Jesus said, I, my, I ain't ashamed to tell you that my mama and my, and my, and my, um, and my uncle, my, me, uh, my, my, my mama, my, the, the, my, one of my grandmama slept with her father-in-law. Then got Rahab, then she slept, but then she got herself together. Then out of Rahab came Boaz and that man had the word of God. Boaz sound just like the word of God. And that's Ruth and Boaz. And now we're getting ready to bring in a little boy named Jesse. But what would God do when he got Jesse? Jesse gave birth to David. And David took that ball and he threw it straight into the hand of Jesus. And said, that's why we always refer to Jesus as the son of David. Because everybody else, 
that king started rolling out. And when Jesus called that boss, I called it. And he said, go for it. But they thought, the enemy thought that the, the even, you know, he thought the game was tied. We heard of the promise. And Jesus called the ball. But how in the world did he get on the ground? He said, just give me time. If I don't come back up, then we ain't won this game. Just as sure as he, they nailed him on the cross, he kept his word. He said, I'm going down for three days. That's why we can, pro we can, we can properly trust him. He said, in three days, I'm coming up. Three days, he's up. And ever since then, he said, I've been trying to pass out tickets to the people. Meet me at the, at the, at the we don't won the game. It's over. I told my dad it's finished. I won. It ain't been, but the score was one to zero. And he said, it's been like this since my dad has spoken. So with that being said, he's won the game. What are we doing? He said, all I need you to do is come out and help me celebrate. Go get everybody else that wasn't at the game, didn't understand what I went through and all that stuff. Tell them I said, come on in because we're going to have a party. Pull the Gatorade on me. Give me the trophy. I stand up on the thing. Y'all can take pictures of me, all of that. And I need y'all to get together and get out in the street and tell everybody it's a party going on. He said, when we throw a party, it's called a feast. It has nothing to do with the kind of parties y'all have. He said, once y'all, everybody that's invited that come to the party, then God going to come in and say, hey, y'all, come on up here. I'm, I, not only am I going to invite you to the party to celebrate there on earth, get on up here and let me let y'all live with my son. Finally got what I wanted. That's what the word is. It's a book of God's game plays. And it's all he's trying to do is get people to come to the game. That's why we think that we came up with football. God, God said, you didn't come up with that game. He said, I'm the author and finisher of everything that's good. So all we got to do is get excited to understand that the word must be read. And if you really want to know why we study the Old Testament, because it gives you an in-depth study to understand. It, it illuminates the New Testament. When you understand the plays, and then when, you understand, and then when Jesus does his touchdown, the Old Testament just brighten that light up. Because Jesus said, I am the son. I am not the father. My father and I are one. That means that what he thinks, I think. But if you think you like me, that's what Jesus said. You think you like me? You're going to love my father. He is to die for. He's to give up everything that, that man, whatever it is that's hard for you to let go of. He said, when you, because he said, if you looked at him, he said, you would die. He said, you ain't seen goodness until you seen the father. I'm his son and y'all brag on me. He said, but my daddy, I'm, I am what he created. I'm my father's son. And I can't take his place. I just represent him. If you think I'm good, imagine my daddy. My daddy thought all of this. I cried when I thought about it. I had to close my eyes and be on the ground for three days not seeing my dad. We ain't never been separated. He said, get the news out. So my prayer is to get people to understand not only to read the word, because I say that every day, but how do you unfold the word? Now that we understand God's plan, how do you unfold it? He said, get hint, hint. In the beginning, that's the first word I said. He said, put your star, put your car right there like you're playing Monopoly. And then at the end, I'm going to say, amen. Unfold the book. He says, now, where, where people get all crazy, he said, when you, let me tell y'all something. Let me explain y'all this grace. Grace is the time that God has given you to change clothes. It's not that, you, that you're solidified and you stand in sin. No, he said, that's the dressing room. When you, when you go to Macy's and you try on something, you go in there, grace. Go in there and see what you look like. He said, go in there and fix that thing. If it's too tight, don't wear it. Grace, the grace part of God is I'm giving you, an, I'm extending time for you to examine my word before I come back. Because if I come back the second time, Jesus said, not if, but it's, no, when I come back the second time, I ain't coming back the first time. You ain't finna hit me. I'm coming back with a rod of iron. That means I'm going to tell you that you, you know, don't, don't, if you don't have your receipt, don't come in here. And I'm going to mean it. Because we got to get it right. And he said, I'm, when I tell you this, he said, I'm, I'm already spotting people all over the world. And we're going to meet. And I'm going to be the king. I'm going to be the king and I'm going to be the Lord. I'm going to call the shots. I'm going to be the priest. That means I'm going to tell you how to have a church. And then I'm going to be um, 
the government. And I'm going to tell you when you better not steal nothing. I'm just saying. And the people that's going to work for me, they ain't going to they gonna, they gonna be just like me. They're going to be my dream. They're going to be the day that we get ready to talk, but they're going to execute my judgment the way I want it done. Mm -hmm. So that's how easy the word is. I know I'm excited saying it, but I think I want to put it in writing so people can get a, a snapshot of how to read the word. Because what we have done, we take the word and we flip it over like this. We just flip it. He said, that's not the proper way to read the word. I'm not saying that you can't find nothing good. You're just not going to find it the proper way it's supposed to be read. Then you're going to start treating the word like you could do it at any time. Then he said, finally, somewhere you're going to mess up. But if you take your time and you read it. And he said, that's why we got all these different religions and all these different denominations and all these different mindsets. He said, because the word is a, it's the only book that if you hunger for it, the font of the word will illuminate itself and get big and you'll see things that other people can't see. So you can't, you can, you can mess around with going to different scriptures and time them together. He said, but as soon as later you're going to run into something that's going to lock you in, then you got to start telling lies. He said, but if you just stay with the word and what you're going to find out, there are things in the word that this will be discussed that only people in the word would ever know it because you, you can't, you're not going to pick up on that like that. You would run into a scripture that uh, King James left out a, a number. And only people that know that that number was left, left out are people that had to study hard to understand, oh, I see what happened. But if you just think this book is something that you can just go and play with and all like that, then you, he said it's not. So I'm going, God is going to give me the platform or has given me the platform because the reason why I'm, I'm doing it like this because when God calls you to whatever he calls you to, you got to be doing this. I'm a fighter in the, in the back. In, in, if anybody knows me in the, in the um, public school system, you know I'm a fighter. And anytime something that's not right, I stand up for it. I had no idea that that was part of God's plan for my life, period. Because as soon as I turned in that resignation, as soon as I retired, he snatched me. He said, I want you to teach the word the way you did, ma'am. And I... I would decompose a problem. I stood up in a lot of meetings. I said, you cannot teach those kids like that. Now, I'm just doing what I know to do naturally. And just like he took Peter, now, Peter was not a lazy fisherman. So he said, whatever you are doing, I want to use that. And I want to take what you're doing and, 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 and bring you into the kingdom so you can get the kingdom done like that. Jesus said, he said that that guy that was, you know, had stolen from his boss. And then he saw himself in trouble. He said, I'm too proud to be Jesus said, if I wish I had people on my side. If the kingdom, if the children of light would understand to push the word the way this guy pushing the, the opponent of the word. He said, if we push the word the way they did this last election for the president, like the Democrat was <clears throat> relentless. And I mean, they were just calling my phone like crazy. I think they were calling me because I was black. And I think they were just, I had to rebuke the devil. I had to stop calling me like that. But anyway, emailing me, texting me, and all on Facebook, all kind of stuff. I ain't know they were doing everybody else like that, but anyway. Uh, but they pushed that thing. But if we push the word like that, then the world can now trust the word to get back into the school system. Not as religion, but a way to understand the best written book by man and to give the children a choice. Because once you read it, the next thing is how you going to do it. Then, you, then if you decide that you don't want to do it, then you have been properly taught. You just made a decision of what God gave us in the beginning of choice. But with all so many things out here and so many voices and so many people saying so many things, people don't know what to believe. But he said this, if, you, if people will receive how to read it, then I can get people to, to, to be uh, 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 accountable that they were not misled. So I do this for my children. This is what I do for my sons. And the things that I write and the things that I say, I just happen to put it online. What you see me do is how I taught my sons. And even though some of them were like uh, Samuel's children, they decided, I want to venture out into the world. But I said, you ain't going to fit. You're going to be a Jonah because you've been taught too much. You're going to always get other people in trouble while you're on the boat. And they're going to have to throw you overboard so they can live. You can't be out of place like that. You've been taught since the womb. And ever since then, I have spoken the word of God in my house every day of my life that I can remember. 
I ain't said, no, I ain't did everything right. Because one time I looked at the one and said, Lord, is you really this? Because that's all I know is you. And I started looking at the darkness. He said, it's just as dark as you can't see nothing. That's how dark it don't go out there. And if I attempted to go out there, I said, I won't live alone. I can't live like this. It's ain't for me. So I come back in here and then I stay with the word until I got it to the point that I understand it well enough to teach it. And I, and I don't doubt what I say. Because I ain't doing it but reading it. I ain't know what I mean. I just have, and what I'm doing today, I'm getting ready to have some fun. I got to go take some back to the store. Let me get to do work. That ain't, I ain't finna rush because you know I don't. All right. It ain't, there's 23 verses in here. I just knew I had this, this part that I want to tell people how to read. But I'm going to put that in writing so that people, I'm going to try to get that on every network that I know how to get on. Every network. Oh. If you only knew how bad I wanted your children to pass, that's how this is how I do in class. And if you if you ever was you were under me when I directed the choir, I ain't changed. Only thing that changed is my assignment. Everything else was prep time to get me ready to be a sincere. And when I get ready to leave this world, he said, You'll know when it's time to go. Because you're gonna be sufficed and full. <laughs> so that's what the word told me. And I believe it. I got an assignment to do. And like Jesus said, I got an appointment to sign. I got that way I got time to waste. I can't get in conversation with people about frivolous things because I'm I, I'm on a schedule. And that's what we need to know our assignment. Because if you think you're going to live forever, you're not. But if you get in God's class, he'll tell you, you'll know. You'll know when it's time for you to wrap it up. So my assignment is I can't talk about certain things because I got to do my part. It's my time to do what I do. The baton is now... He, he, when Jesus came, he just said, all oh, y'all go out there and preach the gospel. Don't worry about the baton no more. Just go out there and take the word and just go out there and take me and go in the highway and the hedges and the black folk and the white folk. That's why I said it's crazy for us to have these separate churches when all we had to do was read the word. We don't fuss about one, one, two, three, four, five. That ain't no five. That's not five fingers. That, that, I don't believe that five fingers. That's God said my word ain't no harder than you understand one, two, three, four, five. And if you got sense enough to know you got five fingers and you know when five is up, my word is just that simple. All right, let's go ahead and have some fun with this word today. Because, ooh, I had some fun there. Nice study. And the Lord said unto Samuel, so what happened? Samuel, Saul has been told that you have, you lost the election. God said, you are not the king. You are not the president. And now you can kick if you want to, but you ain't president. It's, I'm finna move on now. Come on with me. You, now, one thing I can say about God, this is what the good thing God told about Samuel. I mean, Saul. And I, God gave me this. He gave me stuff funny, y'all. He said, just because you've been reduced down to a hamburger, you know what it feels like to be a Big Mac, but now you got to serve as a hamburger. But guess what? You still on the menu. It came from God. That was so funny to me. You were the Big Mac, but now you are. You did. You did. You 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 a hamburger, but you ought to be glad you on the menu, cause I could have killed you. He said, "But this is what I'm trying to tell you. When that guy wrote in that word and said, I would be a doorkeeper, that means if in words says we're gonna scarcely make it, even us that think we're Big Macs. God said, I'm tell y'all something. All y'all gonna scarcely make it, scarcely." The only reason I'm keeping my word because I told my son, if you do this, you get me as many as I can. But you help them. And let them know I'm coming to the day they think not. He said, now don't get crazy now and start thinking you're going to put me off because the day I'm coming for you is the day that you took off. I got a schedule for people that put me off. I'm coming on the day that you're not working for you. He said, so stay ready. Stay in line with the word. Because just as sure as you decide, I'm going to jump right back in here one more time. He said, Daddy, that's your lights going off right there. You don't take me serious. He said, do you know the price that I paid to have this baby shower with my son to come through and y'all kill him? He said, do you know the, all the people that, oh, Lord, I said, I'm finna read. He said, when you sit down and say, Father, thank you for this food and in the name of Jesus, bless blah, blah, blah. And however we pray, he said, do you know how many people it took to bring that bread, that bread to your house? Do you not know that that bread just didn't land at, at, at Kroger? It was a, a cow, some dirt, a farmer, some machines. He said, you don't think about all that. He said, that's why I'm telling you right now, if you don't hear my song, you don't know what it costs to get there. 
If I just tell you this piece of gum right here, he said, this package right here just didn't produce gum. That's all you see. He said, I'm going to judge you for everything, for the, the font here, the people that made the package, the people that made the gum, the people that sold it, the, the little writing on the side, the people that calculated how many calories in here. He said, it's a lot behind what you get and you don't thank me for. He said, imagine that I had my son uh, strategically planned to come through all these hands. And you think I'm going to let, and all he wants you to do is what? Treat people right. He said, you don't want to go to hell. Because people down there don't take bail. They tell lies. And all I'm asking you to do is to consider me first. Get away from religion and get my word. And get this world back in shape. I'm talking about this, this video is going to every continent. It's going to go to, if, and I'm not just talking about me, God raising the people that's reading the word. There are people that are qualified now to say, go out there and teach. And he said, all these, all these uh, kings like, like uh, Saul, he said, you're getting ready to be reduced to a hamburger. But you better be glad you're still on the menu. He said, all these big time preachers that will not turn. I'm going to let you come in. He said, you're going to understand what it's like since you jumped and got ahead. I got to show you how to be the tail. I got to show you how to be, go to the bottom because you got up there too quick. And now you're so proud. you like, Saul, please, Samuel, please come over here and recognize me in front of the people. At least Saul said, is some of y'all just want it done because it's in your spirit. He said, but I made, I made Saul speak it out of his mouth. Please, Samuel, come and show the people that, you know, you're still with me. Sam, Sam said, Samuel said, go on in there. Go ahead. And then he went in there, oh, worship the Lord. And Sammy said, bring me that knife. And bring that king out here that should have been dead. And chop that man to pieces. He got to get it right because God don't play favorites. You're going to see unlikely people that's reading the word that God can really raise up. They don't carry a title. They don't carry a denomination. All that stuff is in God's way. That's why he said, shut this world down. And as much as he told us to greet one another with a holy kiss. We can't do that now. We got, to, we got to kiss online. All I'm saying, you kiss the book. Get the book. And, and let's get in the word of God and see what God is saying. So when we, if God raises us up out of this thing, and he may not, I don't know. But I do know that when Jesus comes, he got prepared people that's able to work in different parts of the world. Because he's going to be here a minute, according to the word. According to my understanding, the length of a thousand years. So I'm just saying, he's going to lock that old devil down. He's going to get something down. And then he's going to lose that. It's a lot going to happen. And at the end of the day, you got, Jesus said, if you thought that the Old Testament was, was, you know, was a lot of death, he said, let me tell you something, it don't have to be in the new. He said, but you better read Revelation. We ain't playing. I got this thing. This thing is, we got a schedule. God knows. It. I don't know the day, but I do know what time it looked like. As it was, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. What were they doing in the days of Noah? The Bible said they were marrying, so... You know, we still get married during the corona. Maybe if nobody was getting married during the corona, we probably can say maybe we're not getting married right now. He said, but I'm coming at a day you think not. All I want you to do is be sincere about what you're doing. Be at work doing your job because you don't never know when I'm going to show up. I gave you my game plan. Stick with the book. All right. Let's, let me, let's have some fun with it because it's funny to me. And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? Samuel had a relationship with Saul. Samuel was hurt. When you have to cut people loose because of the word of God, and then you start going through the emotional part of that, know that Samuel did it too. So God is saying, that's, that's part of the, 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 um, the cutting. So don't think because you still long for that person, but if they don't line up with the word, you got to cut them. And then you're going to say, you're going to, and then, but then you, the word says, cease not to pray for him. But you got to cut for God. I don't care if it's your daughter. I don't care if your husband. If anybody don't line up with this word, we got to get the cut. Because God ain't playing. And the Lord said unto Sam, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Again, he can be a hamburger. He just ain't a Big Mac. And God said, ain't none of y'all Big Macs. I just use this so we can make sure that we understand it. He said, get up and fill your horn with oil. Get up. I got something you to do. I can't, I can't deal with you. I'm moping, and I'm moping around like that. Get on up. I need to put you to work. 
Sin, if I have rejected uh, Saul from being king, of being the leader reigning over Israel, fill thine horn with oil and go. Get you some oil and get ready to go. Got something for you to do. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Go to Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem. Just the time of year we in, ain't it? Let's go to Bethlehem. Some get ready. I want somebody from Bethlehem. This book has been, I'm telling y'all the truth. I started in the book of Daniel and I wrapped around and came back to the book of Genesis. And that's when I learned how to read the word when I got back in, in Genesis. But every time something in, in, that's happening in the world, I'd be right on the same page in the word. That's so, that's so interesting to me. This is the time that we celebrate the little town of Bethlehem. I'm just mentioning his name today. During the same season. When that boy Nick got, when the police caught that guy, all the, the word was given instruction. This is what, how you behave during this time. Right there in the word when they were exodusing, coming out of um, something was going on in the word. Because I can't remember exactly when it was. It might have been that same time. Because I think I started, yeah, it was right during that same time. And I said, Lord, you mean to say the word is, is parallel? He said, that's how fresh it is for readers. And I ain't make this up. I just haven't built this page. But guess what? Are we talking about Bethlehem? The word is. And Samuel said, how can I? He said, um, I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have, prov I have provided me a king among his songs. I need you to get on down there and get the ticket to Bethlehem. And Samuel said, hold oh, Lord, wait, 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 wait. I got a question. He said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, because he's always watching out on me, he would kill me. That let me know that God is, is concerned about everything that concerns us, your fears. And he, he didn't push Samuel back to say, I don't like to ask me that you know I'm God. He didn't do that. Get what God said about that. Nothing. <laughs> he kept on with his sentence. He said, and the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, he didn't say nothing about Samuel's fear. He didn't give you your assignment. I told you, get on down to Bethlehem. And my next thing is, and take a heifer with you. I heard you. So you know I got you covered. You ain't got to worry about that. Take a heifer with you and say, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. I'm not trying to give you an answer to your question. This is what you got to do. Go get a cow, a female cow, take it with you and sacrifice that cow. And y'all finna have a picnic. And I'm going to be there with you because I'm going to get my part and let y'all enjoy the rest of it. And call Jesse to the sacrifice. These folks I want you to invite. Jesse is the daddy. And I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint unto me him whom I name unto you. So go on down to Bethlehem and tell Jesse you're coming to his house and get a cow. And female cow and y'all barbecue it. Grill it. That's all God said. Fourth verse. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake. What do you do? He got up, got him a helper, and went down to Bethlehem. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. Check. God said, do that. And the elders of the town trembled. Oh! Now here goes Samuel at home. God said, now you scared. You scared of what Saul do. Look at, look at, do you not know that they scared of you? <laughs> and the elders of the town trembled at his coming. They said, oh Lord. And said, come is thou peacefully. And said, wait, wait, wait. The last time we saw you were chopping up somebody. You, 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 you scared. And God said, boy, I already got that taken care of. There you answer. And he said, peacefully. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself, we'll get clean. And come with me to the sacrifice. He said, you invited. And he sanctified Jesse. Set, set him apart. And his sons, y'all take a good bath, put some deodorant on. And call them to the sacrifice. Y'all want y'all, y'all come on, eat with me. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Eliab, because he knew that he was looking for a king. And he come that 
tall, good looking son of Jesse walked out. They all must have been working. They just came out of early fitness. And says, sure that the Lord has anointed this guy. You is the one. You got to be the one. But the Lord said unto him, Samuel, look not on his countenance. Look at his face. Or the height of his statue. Because I have refused him. I don't want that. For the Lord sees not as man sees. God said, I use a fat person. I use a skinny person. I use a bano, a bano person. I use... I use a midget. I use whoever I want to. I have refused him for the Lord to see it not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance. He said, you do it every day. But I check out the heart. I want to know what you made out. I want to see how you do things. I want to know what you look like when ain't nobody looking. What you doing when ain't nobody looking? That's where your heart is. Then Jesse called Abinadab. He said, well, okay, my next son. And made him pass before Samuel. And he said, that's not the one. I know it when I see it. Neither had the Lord chosen him. He said, no, that's not him. And Jesse made Shema to pass by. What about this third boy? Look at him. And he said, mm -mm, that's not the one. Neither had the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse. Samuel said, now I know God told me to come. And that, that, is it turning me over? Turn the help over? <laughs> I can't help it. And while we are, this ain't, he ain't the one. Mm -mm. The Lord has not chosen him. This has got to be somebody in here. And Samuel said, I got a question unto you. Jesse, this is all the children you got? Jesse said, and he said, no, there remained one. Yet the youngest, I got a boy out there in the field. And behold, he keeps the sheep. I mean, he, don't, he, he ain't been, he ain't took no bath or nothing, but, um, yeah, well, he took a bath at the moment. You, you ain't talking about him, are you? But yeah, that little boy? And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him. Go get him. But well, we would not sit down and eat. We will not sit down until he come here. Nobody gonna be, we ain't gonna break no bread together. I gotta get the, get the king in order. So Jesse said, y'all go out there and tell David that's coming. And he sent and brought him in. Ain't called him David yet. Now he was ruddy. You could tell he been working. He worked out. You could tell all outside. He was built. He ain't been, no, he ain't been in the LA fitness. He been out there working with them sheep and keeping up, fighting them bears and them lions and stuff. And with a beautiful countenance, he had a very nice looking face. And good to look at. Where is it at? And the Lord said, arise, anoint him. That's my boy. That's the one I want. You didn't even consider him. Because he was out there acting like me. He was busy. I don't call lazy people. I don't. Lazy man can't even hear me talk. Then Samuel took the horn of oil that God told him to have and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Right in the midst of your brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David. His name called. First time his name ever been called. And the spirit of the Lord. And we've been talking about that name ever since. And I read what David's name is called more than Moses. Anybody else said, David is God's man. This is where my son coming through. He had to take care of the sheep. You know, he's going to take care of them sheep. He's going to take care of my people. That's why he just can't be laying hands on people talking about, God called me to preach. You weren't doing nothing how God called you. That's the first lie you told. You weren't doing nothing. Just passing down, giving license and all this stuff to people. You lazy. Disqualified. You better, you better hope that God let you open the door for people. Because it's going to be some switcheroos. Because people getting educated, they're going to find out this, this ain't nothing to play with. You can't go in here and hoop and holler. You got to educate people. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. From that day forward, the Spirit of God said, I rest here. 
I rest here. I get up in the morning with David. I go to bed with David. I wake, I watch, well, God don't go to bed, but I'm just saying, he just with David all, David wake up, I'm there. David go to sleep, I'm there. David, David go out there with the sheep, I'm with him. David get on his knees, I'm David in there learn how to play the piano, I'm with him. Playing the harp, I'm with him. Everything that David put his hand on, I'm with him. And you know if I'm with him, it must be good. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Went back home. After they got to doing what they had to do. But guess what? The spirit of the Lord came upon David. But guess what the spirit of the Lord did to Saul? But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. It ain't on you, Saul. You still look the same. You still got the same title, same position. A lot of people walk around with the same position. And he said, but ain't no, ain't no anointing is there. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And you got to have one spirit or the other. Ain't no in between. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You don't want me? You don't want to follow my instruction? Then you're going to be controlled by the spirit that you want. I took that spirit off of you and I placed that spirit on my spirit on, on David. Now you got an evil spirit. That's what you wanted. Because you had time enough to change. You could have called me and told me so I, I was wrong. You, you tried to repent. When you uh, still try to put on the performance, you tell you tell me you halfway telling I'm sorry, and then you telling Saul to come in and recognize me in front of them. Your heart one, right? All right, the spirit of the devil came upon the spirit of the wrong spirit came upon Saul, and Saul's servant said unto him, "Now, now the servant telling the king something." And Saul's servant said unto him, "Behold, now an evil spirit from God trouble you. We know you got the devil in you." You work with a person long enough, you know that you know your ball got the devil in. I'm just saying, where is it? Cause you you lost the election. And they, they, did we just have an election? I told you the word right along with it. <laughs> and Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God trouble you. You mad? Let our Lord now command thy servants. He said, Now give us permission, which are before you your servant, to seek out a man who is cunning, somebody know how to play an instrument. On a harp, we know exactly who you want. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon you, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. He said, let's go get you somebody to play a song for you. And Saul said on his servant, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. They said, okay. You know how them servants be talking in that good. You know God don't know the void or whatever. Right? Y'all heard about what I, but we saw don't know what's going on. Because he's been acting crazy. But let's go get David. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. That boy is cunning. In playing. Ooh, he can play. And a mighty valiant man. You, you heard about he took that bear in the lion, right? And a man of war, ooh, he can fight for that boy and throw a slingshot and knock you straight out. I believe he can throw down a giant. <laughs> them, them custodians and people be just talking, boy. They be knowing what's going on in the classroom because they ain't there by the classroom. And prudent and mad, he paid bills on time. And a calmly person, he know how to get along with everybody. He speak, to, he speak to everybody. He speak to the rich and the poor, the black and the white. God said, that's my kind of man. And the Lord is with him. Uh-oh. You know, these people know what's going on. Tell them Saul to me. You know somebody can help you out. <laughs> Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse. said, okay, go talk to his daddy. And said, send me David, thy son, which is with the sheep. So they done told David all about Told Saul all about that. We work with sheep. And Jesse took an ass and loaded up with bread. And a bottle of wine and a kid and sent it by the David, sent it by David's son under Saul to take take him a gift. He wanted to see you. Well, you know you're getting popular around him. You is populous. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly. And it became his armor bearer. Saul fell in love with, with his next person. He fell in love with the new president. Oh, new king. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray, that I want him to stay with me. Stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. You know, I like good people. David's a good one. 
And the, check this out. Last verse. And it came to pass when the evil spirit of God was upon Saul that David took his harp and played with his hand. You know the song I think out in my house I played. Did what I did what I didn't mean that. This ain't not a this ain't written. And Saul just loved this song. Guess the name of this song is. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. <laughs> Nobody say, sit down. Nobody say, get the street. Nobody say, get up. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. <laughs> I was going to play that on here. I ain't, I ain't do it. And guess what? We saw, heard that song. David playing. That David took a harp and played with his hand. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. And Saul said, oh, I like that. <laughs> Saul was, so Saul was refreshed and was well. Now that me did me now. And the evil spirit departed from him. That's the word of God. I can't wait to get to 17, y'all. Let's read this book because it's good. Talk to y'all later. Love y'all. Bye.